You're late. I'm a cookie cutter. You live two minutes from here and you're late. I had to brush my teeth. Not from where I'm standing. <laughs> you, I, <laughs> you sure you brush your teeth? I'm just joking. I'm, I can't smell your breath from here. All right, I brushed them yesterday. How about that? You brushed them with what? <laughs> piss. <laughs> with what substance? Cocaine and piss. This isn't going to come out good because I have the sun pointed right at me. So let me change my location. Anyway, what's up, bully? Not much. A little chest day. Nice. Down to a trim, 290. Looking better than Dale did when he was 285. Here we go. So, if I look better than Dale yep. at 290 when he was 285, as I continue to lose weight, I will look better than Dale at that same weight. You know, I thought that I wouldn't have to hear any more of these bizarro math equations once I think we stop Dale, filming Genova. I guess Dale's I was like wrong. 265 now. Uh -huh. I'm going to get to 265. Jay, you're starting out your benching session with 25s. Is this like the new Princess Andrew workout? What are you no, doing No, I here? just, ever since I tore my pack, I start out super light and do more warm-up sets. How's that feeling, by the way? Uh, I, I mean, it's healed, but it's deformed. But I'm not about to start benching with a slingshot. I think people that bench with a slingshot are mentally weak. Oh boy. And short. The guy down here on the end in the red shirt, he's an older fella. He benches uh, 315 for about five reps. Pretty strong. Uh, you, you look down there and he, he, he's got 135 on the bar. You look away and then you look over there 10 minutes later and he's got 315 on the bar. And I'm like, how in the fuck does he get to 315 in 10 minutes at his age? I used to be able to do that when I was a kid, but not now. Now, you can't rush your warm up once you're What older. about before your pec tear? I still had to slow down my warm ups. It, it's not about how many sets you do or how many reps. There's an actual time factor. For, for your core temp to elevate. You, that can't happen quick. See, when I tore my pec at uh, Spanish River Park, my core temp was not up, up, was not high enough. I was walking around in shorts and no sweatshirt like an idiot. You know, and the killer McLeod was dressed like a bo professional boxer. Mm -hmm. Had his hoodie up. That old guy down there in the red just knocked out a double with 335. He does the same thing every week. He'll probably add a 5 or a 10, do another double, then he'll go up to 350, do a single. Does it every single week. And I'll tell you what, if you bench press 350 every week, you'll never bench press 360. Well, you just called it. What did he do? He took the fives off and did what? Well, he, I think he just added a 10, so he's got 355 on there. There's no way he'll get two. If he gets two, that'll be progress. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I would bet no that he gets a single and racks it. All right, Bowie, well, we give us a play-by-play -play on this bench press to our right. All right, he's got 355 on the bar. I should say to your right, to my left. Who's on first? What's on second? I don't know. Third base. You totally just missed a great. I, who's on first? What's on second? Who came in third? Oh shit! Is that cookie cutter, Lenny? To use a watch to time your rest? Well, you've been doing that since I met you. Yeah, Timex Iron Man. All right. So he's having a little chat with his spotter. I own actually two things that are Iron Man. I've got an Iron Man watch and I've got Iron Man sunglasses. So I'm equipped to start training for a triathlon. Which you're not gonna do. I could start today. But it's getting late, so I might wait till tomorrow. You really should start training for a triathlon at six in the morning. It's already 8.30. So that's what, 335? 
I think he's got two tens on each side. So that'd be 355. As long as those are tens. He's doing all this nonsense for a five pound PR. Didn't I break my reading glasses talking about yes, PRs? Yes, you did. You actually, you destroyed them. <laughs> <laughs> all right, it's unwrapped. There goes the negative. Yeah, I like that. He nailed it. Yeah. <laughs> Rep number two. Oh, he got two. All right. Wow, the guy made gains. 335 for a double. I think it was 350. No, I think it's 110. Oh, you're right. 330. 335? Yeah, he did that last week. Jesus Christ. Well, he's stronger than me right now. Do you still have to go to the bathroom or are you good? I don't know, I, I don't think that was a poop. I think that was my suppository dissolving. Jay, you seem vexed and perturbed that the guy with the red shirt a couple benches down went from 335 down to 315. Why? Because he, he really doesn't have a clue what he's doing. He's obviously a, a life extension clinic uh, lifter. One of these older guys that's very successful. They can, can afford to go to a, a clinic, get on a little TRT, a little growth hormone. Then he comes in here, benches three plates, shows off in front of all the other young guys. Doesn't mean you know what you're doing. Just means you got money. Well, after you hit 335 for two, what should his next move be? Go up a little more or just call it a workout? Yeah. Well, well, I mean, why go down 20 pounds and do another set? What is that? Yeah, that's not enough for a drop set going down 20 pounds for a drop set? What's the point? He doesn't vary his workouts at all. He tries to impress these young guys with three plates every single weekend. So, typical, typical TRT HGH lifter. Look at me, I got money, I can go to a clinic. All right, assessment time. You just did 245 for eight. What's going on? I'm losing strength on this on this carb restricted diet. I'm 290 pounds and I'm pathetically weak. And I'm only losing a pound or two a week. It's not like I'm dieting for a show like Dale Chance. Are you trying to lose weight? What, what, what's yeah. with the diet? Well, something Dave Palumbo, who I think is an idiot, he did say one thing that that is stuck in my head. Dave Palumbo said, there's no 300 pounders in their 60s walking around. And if you think about it, there isn't. You go to any 55 and over community, go to the pool. There's no 300 pound men. So. Do you want me to spot you or are you good? No, just having that camera on me will piss me off. Oh, good. All right, this is my goal weight. Currently 290 pounds. I want to be 275. So this is 15 pounds less than I weigh. But in about 15 weeks, this will be what I weigh. So I need to master this weight. field day with that footage. As he should. Jay Masters benching 275 for six. Not even his body weight. Well fans, that's proof that I'm dieting. Uh, pathetic. Now you guys know why bodybuilders hide by the dumbbell rack. And I'm only calorie, I'm only in a calorie deficit to lose about a pound a week which is not a very big deal. A lot of people lose two pounds a week, but it has completely zapped my strength. 
One thing I've learned over the past couple of years, at my age, no amount of gear can solve this strength loss uh, problem. I could do a massive test deck on D-ball cycle and- Law of diminishing returns? All I would do is feel sick all the time. I wouldn't get that much stronger. Yeah, I'd probably pile on a bunch of water weight and look like Dale Chance at 285. Oh boy. But I wouldn't be any stronger. I would just be sick all the time. So, father, father time has definitely caught up to me and jumped on my back and he's trying to bring me down. So. That's all right, man, happens to all of us, it's okay. We're still a six months away from being eligible to move into a 55 and over community. 54 and a half. So, I gotta get lean. Worry about making it to 65 so I can get Social Security. You can get Social Security at 62. Really, I thought they upped it for people my age. No. You can, you can get it at 62, you get partial at 62, partial at 65, and then full, I think, at 67. I'd have to double, doesn't it suck that we have to start thinking about this kind of shit now? Uh, I know a lot of people. I never even thought about social security until a, a year or two ago. I know no. a lot of people that have done the math, and to, to make up for the money you don't collect between 62 and 65, you have to live to be like 80. Right. So if, if it's shady, if you're gonna make it to 80, you take that social security the day you're eligible. 100% correct. Oh, I ain't waiting on nothing. If you say it's 62, I guess I believe you. It's 62, look it up. I'm gonna start collecting social security at 62. So what, I'm 54 and a half? I got like seven years? You can just go on their website. You punch in your social security number, you create an account, and it will tell you right now exactly how much you're eligible for a month. Uh, the return of the bench block. Just more things for Brad, Brad to throw across the gym and his little tantrums. You mean like, let me see? Like No, I'm not gonna let you. <laughs> you don't have the gay little postal shorts on either. I can wear them for you though if it'll turn you on. Tell you what, everybody can make fun of the bench block. But I'll tell you what, it saves your shoulders on the incline. Uh, I can't touch my chest on the incline because this muscle and this muscle literally run into each other. So I get to here and there's nowhere to go. So I have to alter my shoulder rotation to get the bar to touch. And that puts the joint in a situation where it could be easily injured. Now if you're a beginner, you don't need the bench block. But the minute you become a little bit muscle bound, it'll save your shoulders. A lot of people think the bench press is what ruined their shoulders. It's more likely the incline. I know it ruined my shoulders. All you have to do is watch the old videos where I filmed Jason and know that. You know, I think what ruined your shoulders. I know, I know what you're gonna say. Was yep. rising, raising the elbows for bicep no. curls. What, what, what ruined my shoulders is when I was younger, I always wanted to have big traps. Yeah. And one of the things I used to do to try to get big traps was upright rows. Oh, and if yeah. you watch the old videos of me doing upright rows, I use, I don't even know how I was able to get my elbows that high. It, it almost looks like it's photoshopped when you look at right. And why I was doing that, I have no idea. That's what destroyed my, my, my right, my left shoulder is fine, my right shoulder. Your humerus should never go higher than parallel to the floor. Right. I know that's geometry, a lot of you guys. And I, and I used to seriously flare my elbows out when I would bench press, which I actually corrected about six years ago before I had my shoulder surgery. So I'm pretty sure it was to dreadful upright row form, which know. is so funny because at the time I thought I was using good form. What a dope I was. We might need to explain the word parallel for Dale because that's 10th grade math. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I know what Dale. parallel is, Jay. That's 180 degrees. <laughs> you are an asshole. <laughs> I got my triangle right here on my carpenter belt. I can do a 45, Jay. I own hey, listen, 
They're playing the uh, the video I'm in by Fatboy Slim. I have no you idea. You never see me? I'm in I'm in this video. Really? Yeah, look it up, maniacs, if you don't know already. Go on YouTube and look up Going Out of My Head by Fatboy Slim. And I'm in the video. Jesus. Back in 1997, I think it was. Oh, it was right. 24 or 25. Here's a good one for Dale. 95 pound incline. It's a narrow grip. Yeah. Punching power. No comment. <laughs> there will be no Spanish River Park 2. McLeod will stay undefeated. I'm more interested in being McLeod's bodyguard than being an opponent. I think maybe he should be your bodyguard. I don't know. Close grip? Yes. Yeah, narrow grip, yeah. Smile for the camera! Need a hand? Not that I'm offering, I'm just asking. No? You're good. Nice. You're getting better at that. You know, I almost sent you a picture of my uh, blood pressure last night. Whoa, I thought you were going to go in a whole different direction. Okay. I could send, send you full frontal nudity. No, that's no, what you're looking no. For. No, I was, uh, I was laying in bed, and you know, I, I have my own blood pressure cuff that I, that I put on my wrist, which I think anybody who does juice should own. You really should monitor your own blood pressure if you're going to cycle. So just for shits and giggles last night, you know, fully, fully relaxed, watching TV in bed in the evening, I took my blood pressure and it was like 122 over 84, which for 290 pounds, you can't get much better than that. What's the highest your blood pressure ever was? Oh God, probably 180 over 110. I should have gone to the ER, but so, uh, my blood pressure is just amazing for 290 pounds. And my, uh, I think my heart rate was 82, which isn't great. But when I went into the hospital one year ago, almost to the day one year ago, my resting heart rate was like 130 when I was in AFib all the time. So last night, my resting heart rate was like 82. So I'm hoping that as I continue to lose weight, I can lower my resting heart rate. If I can get my resting heart rate down to 72, who knows how long I could live. That, that, that's gonna be the key to my longevity, is getting that resting heart rate. But I was pretty happy last night, 182 or, or 82, so Freudian slip. 80, what, I'm all fucked up. I'm high on pre-workout. Um, 122 over 84, or 124 over 82, mm -hmm. something like that. I've got a little dyslexia, barely noticeable. Okay. One uh, percent. But yeah, the health is really coming along. Uh, That's good. I experimented for a few weeks doing two cc's for you European guys. That's an ml of testosterone, and it did literally nothing for my strength. It just made my health feel worse. So I went back to one, one milliliter of test this week, and I'm still weak. I didn't get any weaker. Uh, I'm at that point where more juice simply does nothing. It just makes you feel worse. So I think, uh, you know, I, I, I don't want to say TRT, because I, I did 300 milligrams Thursday. That's a, a bit high for a doctor prescribed TRT. Most people do 200 to 250 a week. I'm doing 300 because I'm not going to pin less than a full CC or a full ML. You know, I was just talking to Andrew off camera about the last time I weighed 290. I think it was in December. And I, I, I looked better in December at 290 than I do now. 
because I was on the way up and not the, the way down. So I was bigger and fuller because I was a bulked 290 instead of a calorie deficient 290. And I was, and then I went on to say, it's hard to not acquire a little bit of mental illness if you're involved in weightlifting. And I want to elaborate on that a little bit. I, I think a lot of us get what, what th there's no real term for it, but I like to call it big orexia, where you start to, you start to overeat and gain weight because of the, the mental illness, your body image, and you get to the point where you're on, where, where you're not looking good anymore, but you continue to feed your face, and it, it, it's uh, it's something that everybody's going to acquire. You probably get it as a teenager trying to bulk up for sports, and a lot of people get rid of it in their 20s when they focus on their career. But if you're a guy like me or Lenny who's been, been a slacker their whole life. Uh, it never really goes away, but bigorexia is real, and uh, it's something that needs to be controlled. Or look what it's done to Lenny's health. It damn near killed me. I was a walking heart attack. <clears throat> now I'm fit as a fiddle. Look at me. I look great. You know, ever since I had my shoulder surgery, I'm so much more aware of things I see in the gym and exercises I see people doing and the guy right behind me is doing military presses with 135 behind the neck but you know he's not stopping at ear level he's going all the way down yeah and I just couldn't even imagine doing that well at my age and, and having been through a, a shoulder procedure oh. the military press you should treat with the same rule as your upright row the humerus bone should never go further than parallel to the floor. Yes. Now, for those of you that did 10th grade math, um, if you know anything about planes and geometry, you should avoid exercises that take a joint through two planes. Anytime a joint crosses a plane, you put it in a vulnerable position for an injury. Because when a, when a joint crosses a plane, that's when different muscles transition uh, as the primary movers. So that's when your body is at its weakest, when you transition from one plane to the next. And that's when an injury can happen, when there's a momentary lack of strength to support the joint. When, it, when, the, when the body switches over, um, to a, to a different primary mover. Like in the bench press, it was a great example. After you push off the bottom, you get to what people call the sticking point. That's where the, when the humerus gets to parallel to the floor. That's when the triceps take over as the primary mover. And where do people hurt their shoulder? Boom, right there. Another reason people hurt their shoulder in the bench press is they don't they don't arch their back and they're not using the lats on the bottom. See, that's all lats. My humerus is back. That's all lats. People think it's chest. That's lats. And then it's triceps. So the more you study physics and geometry, which is further than Dale got in high school. That'll be fine. The more you will learn to understand the biomechanics of weightlifting and the science behind strength and power. You know, yesterday we were talking about the, the idiots who talk about dropping a penny from the top of the Empire State Building, how the penny would travel through your entire body. And that's really not true. Because I believe the, the terminal velocity of gravity is about what, 180 miles an hour? No, I think it's I think it's 120 to 130. 120. If I'm not mistaken. Right. Now, something like a penny is not very aerodynamic. So if the penny starts to starts to rotate, it's going to grab a whole lot of air. Something like a marble is going to come down a whole lot harder because it's going to travel through the air better. So when, when, when you compare objects falling through gravity, the aerodynamics have to be equal. Like a, a ping pong ball 
is is not gonna is not gonna come down like a ball bearing. Where are you going with this? Well, we were talking about the how, be, using bands and training. Bands have no mass, so I, we were, I was talking about force equals mass times acceleration. Mm -hmm. If there's no mass to a band, why does it take force? And the, the, the answer is simply, it has to be acceleration. There's no other math to explain it. And it's a hard concept to put your, your brain around. But it goes back to what we were talking about with terminal velocity. A, a, something under band tension is gonna come down with more force than gravity. So when you train with bands, most of the training effect you're getting is from the negative. That band wants to kill you with that barbell. It wants to come down faster than the force of gravity. So you're actually fighting band tension on the way down. So when you go to your powerlifting meet and there's no band, the negative feels easy. That's why you can blast the weight right up when it's time to do your big single. So, basic Neanderthals that don't understand band training, they just want to stay stupid. They don't want to learn more. There's more to it than just, oh, why don't you just put more weight on the bar? Well, because you're training the negative with the band. Because the a band tension is more powerful than gravity. I was, it's like I, gravity on steroids. Yeah, if you take a 30 pound chain and a 30 pound band and hook the band under your toe and let go of both of them at the exact same time, the band is going to hit the floor first and it doesn't have the mass of the chain. So explain that. Now everyone thinks they're a fucking scientist. Well, not Dale, but most people think they're a scientist. They, but they, they, they don't, it's, it's a hard concept to understand. Band tension is more powerful than gravity. And it all goes back to Newton's second law of motion. Force equals mass times acceleration. So any thoughts on old man Chuck? Well, the first thing I thought about was old man Chuck had a really awesome old, old Corvette. Like a 65 or a 66 or a 67. It was definitely a third generation Corvette. And from what I understand, it was extremely nice. So I'm wondering who inherited that. I don't. I never heard Chuck talk about children. So hopefully someone knows that Corvette is somewhere in storage. You know, that could be something you read about 50 years from now. Someone finds an old Corvette in a barn. Yeah, Chuck was funny. Chuck, I remember Chuck had the ability to deliver really funny lines on and off camera without smiling or laughing. He was always very stoic. He had a and good he, sense of humor. Yeah, he, he was funny. He's a funny guy. Got very defensive if you criticized his form. <laughs> yeah, I know. Chuck always kind of acted like he had something to prove. He loved to talk about his lifts in his younger days. Didn't he used to wear a shirt with a picture of himself on it? I think posing, if I'm not mistaken. That's I remember him. I remember him once wearing a shirt with himself on it to the gym. Wow. He took, him, he took his old lifting days very seriously. How you doing? No, not at all. But yeah, I was, Brad texted me and let me know. There's a maniac who lives over there on the west coast of Florida who let Brad know and Brad let me know. So, and this maniac had been training at the same gym as him for a while. I wonder why he wound up over there. West coast of Florida is a lot different than the east coast of Florida. It's much more laid back. Where there's less of you people. That's 100% true. It's on the I-75 corridor, not the 95 corridor. You know, that's the second time you've made a you people reference to me today, Jay. <laughs> I'm very anti-tribe today. That's all right. Yeah, 75 brings all the people from the Midwest to Florida. 95 brings all the Northeasterners. Right. Anyway, let's wrap this up. You so you can probably find pretty, are, hmm? pretty good pizza on the west coast of Florida because you got more people from Detroit and Chicago. What's in this thing, by the way? 
What is your post-workout? Uh... Essential amino acids. I see the guy in the cup can also smell your breath. Yeah, I don't do the branch chains anymore. I do a blend of all the essential amino acids. All right, you finish that up. We're gonna get out of here. Hope everyone enjoyed the videos today. We'll have video on Jay's channel, video on the Misfits channel. Everyone's happy. And uh, any final thoughts? I gotta check the IV bag on the hooker I have in my trunk.